Welcome back to Midday Kentucky, everyone. Well, it's that time of the show when we go, what's a poppin', what's a poppin'? my friend? And you know what is still poppin', of course? More fallout from that major Best Picture blunder at the Oscars. More? I think we're going to be talking about this for a while. Well, so and now, for the next Oscars as well. Yeah, until the next Oscars. The accounting firm responsible for correctly tallying Academy Award winners said this team didn't move quickly enough to correct the announcement that was made for the Best Picture winner at Sunday's Oscars. You think? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Price Waterhouse Coopers released another statement Monday night saying it accepts full responsibility for what it calls a series of mistakes and breaches of yeah. established protocols. The firm says partner Brian Callanan mistakenly handed an envelope with the Best Actress winner to Warren Beatty and Faye Dunaway, who were presenting the Best Picture honor. PWC says Callanan and another partner responsible for the integrity of of the winners did not correct the mistake quickly enough. Well, you know, it's live TV. What do you want them to do? They were out there pretty quick. Yeah. They well, were there were there. two people that did acceptance speeches. Well, I don't know. It, was, it is what it is. <laughs> yeah. Hey, the personal trainer and host from the show, The Biggest Loser, is recovering from a heart attack. Bob Harper shared the news on Instagram saying he was feeling better and, uh, and better after having the heart attack two weeks ago. Now, the 51-year-old trainer has said in the past that his family has a history of heart problems. He also says that while regular exercise can reduce your risk of heart problems, your family history plays a key role in heart health. Your genes can elevate your risk for high blood pressure and high cholesterol. Harper has three best-selling books on health and fitness. He has appeared on 17 seasons of the NBC show Biggest Loser since 2004. Hope he makes a speedy recovery. Yeah, I'm a big fan really of his. Looks up. like he's yeah. on the mend. A British songwriter and guitarist is suing rock band U2 for $5 million. They're claiming the band stole one of their songs from their 1991 album, mm. Octon Baby. In a lawsuit filed Monday in Manhattan, Paul Rose says U2 lifted elements of his song, Nay Slippin', for their song, The Fly, while they were looking for new inspiration. The lawsuit says U2 heard his song after signing on, the, on with Island Records in 1989, the same year Rose provided a demo tape to the recording studio. Ooh, it's a big thing happening right now. Last month, Serena Williams made history after she won a record-breaking 23 Grand Slam titles at the Australian Open. Now, the Nike athlete made a surprise appearance Sunday night at a Mission Dolores Park in San Francisco and stunned two fans by gate-crashing their match. Can she answer the question was, can I play the winner? As she asked the pair of amateurs. Now, though they tried to coax the tennis ace to break a sweat with, uh, with on the court, she admitted that she didn't have the proper footwear to play. Serena was wearing a pair of her gorgeous fashion boots during the outing, but explained to the fans that she needed her, of course, Nike sneakers to play <laughs> competitively. But agreed to hit the ball for a short and friendly set. The 35-year-old later posed for pictures before uh. heading off for the night. Now, how amazing would that have been? I, I, yeah, I think I would faint. I would be cray, so cray. excited. Well, up next, a man has been found guilty of stealing more than $1 million worth of jewelry from the home of entertainment mogul Simon Cowell. Darren February was convicted Monday of breaking into Cowell's London home in December 2015 while the American Idol judge and his family were sleeping, and February will be sentenced tomorrow. Wow. Now, to some viewers, the pairing of Snoop Dogg and Martha Stewart on their cooking meets talk show, Martha and Snoop Dogg's potluck dinner party, may have been an unlikely one, but the rapper says their connection extends well behind the TV screen. Mm -hmm. We have the appreciation for each other that makes any friendship genuine, Snoop told people at the South Beach Wine and Food Festival on Saturday. However, Ever. Despite the cheeky name of the VH1 series and having baked green brownies together, Snoop says their hangouts don't involve smoking pot together. <laughs> I ain't never smoked with Martha, and I ain't ne but I have smoked around her, but she don't partake. He was the one that said with a laugh, the common love of food has led to many off-camera cooking sessions, lessons and conversation. <laughs> Snoop says Martha Stewart taught him how to make pizza and lobster thermidor. And he taught her an important lesson as well. I, I'm not going to say what he taught her to make. Let's move along, my <laughs> friend. <laughs>